around ACH again. Nice relaxing Friday. We've got some new things to try. We're uh, been reading up on uh, some riding techniques and uh, I'm gonna try to get better into my counter steering. And uh, apexing later. I'm a very early apexer by my estimation, so I'm trying to use the road better. I'm reading the book uh, Proficient Motorcycling by David Huff. Apparently, it's one of the more well liked books about motorcycle riding. And he's got some good stuff to say, so. Hoping to see if I can apply the techniques today. One of the things I thought was very interesting that he pointed out is engine braking is actually stealing traction from your rear wheel. So I did not expect that. He really seems to suggest actually using your brakes on that kind of stuff. And he really gets on the counter steering thing, which I'm I think I'm doing, but I just don't. I don't think I'm doing very consciously. And I think that is a little bit of a limitation, even for people who feel they're a bit more natural riders. I'm trying to use the rear wheel, late apexing. I think I go inside too often, too early. And uh, he's talking about not doing something I do a lot of which is getting a little overcooked and then having to back off on the gas. I might be getting on too hard when I get on, so that's why I overcook a little too much. But gas is actually how you get traction to the rear wheel. So you need to give it something to keep your grip up. Letting go and suddenly getting back on can uh, upset the bike, you can get a high side if it's too much of a difference. You gotta be careful. Now, normally I try to stay a little more middle of the lane, I guess, but I'll go inside on the turn. But he's really advocating using the lane, you know, safely, right? Very much a safely conscious guy, but uh, you know, it's about uh, your own safety. You need to be able to react and control what you're doing and I don't think I have as much control as he's advocating. Now some of these turns are so long and sweeping it's really hard to apply any kind of, of this new technique to it. I mean how do you lady apex a <laughs> turn like that last one? You know, I, I don't know. You gotta get in there sometime. A little beyond where you can see, I guess. One thing I thought was interesting is this idea of some people prefer to keep their head level with the horizon, and I think I'm one of them. I don't even think about it. You know, it's not just a rotation, it's a turn to, uh, so you can keep your eye more level and get a better view. At least how I, that's how I feel about it. This weekend, I was up in Malibu Canyon area, ran into a couple people, one of them on a Ninja 250, the little brother of this bike, the uh, little older brother, and he just had a smooth flowing style, he swung to the outside of the lane and swung back in, and he told me he was barely using the brakes, you know, mostly engine braking, which I always thought it was a good thing, but this uh, you guy really seems to be suggesting you uh, be careful with that because it, it does remove your traction, so it makes it harder to turn. But it was interesting just how smooth and easy he made it seem, where I felt like I was doing a lot of work to uh, try to keep up with him because I'm apexing too early and you know. Other little faults in my riding style. Now one thing that I also
somewhere to explore. Ah, oh, damn, that car just got back in the road. This is the uh, idea that was uh, posited by Sport Rider Magazine recently. Is this using the pegs concept, you know, as a helper to your hands and arms and It'll help you uh, push it around a little bit. Basically, you know, you don't have to put as much effort into your arms if you're, once you get past initial turn, and use your uh, legs to kind of push it over a little more. And uh, use your legs to get it, hold it over, and then use your legs to push it back up again, you know. Your arms are still there. They're all still an important part of the lever, but, just pushing on the pegs has a lot of control, so uh, I'm going to explore that. I'm just doing that now. I didn't try that earlier. All right, we're kind of pushing on the inside peg. Now push on the outside one, get yourself back over. Ooh, that was quick. All right, hold on the inside peg. Pushing the outside one back up. Push on the inside peg. You're still doing the, the, the counter steering, don't get me wrong. Ah! Something hit me. Yeah, I got way inside, which means I got forced outside, which is what David Huff was all talking about. Don't let yourself get forced outside. I'm going in too quick. So you can delay your corner. Stay towards the inside a little longer. He has pictures of a road just like this. That segment right there. It's a perfect example of... Oh, see, I'm getting too hard on the brakes when I go on the brakes. You want to go to stay on the inside when you need to and stay on the outside when you need to. You gotta be a little careful how you apply some of these techniques because there's certain sections of rows cars are very likely to uh, put the corner and come wide when you know one of those is coming. If you suspect, don't use all the outside. Stay in, stay in. There you go. So you get on the brakes, come through, turn late. Get on the brakes, come through, turn late. Prepare for the next one. Brakes, come through, inside. All right, brakes, come through. Apex, prepare for the next one. Get on the brakes a little harder, looks a little sharper. Long one. Prepare for the next one. We'll break a little late. Come in a little. A little too early, maybe, but hold the line. There you go. Now, one thing I thought was interesting that I always suspected, but I don't know. I've got conflicting news on this. I just don't know which one's the right one. I mean, for one thing, uh, unlike some things, he does suggest using both brakes all the time. But you have to be careful with the rear one because it will cause a slide if you uh, get on it too much or if it's too strong, too grippy. So you got to be careful and judicious about using it. But the other thing, I've always understood the concept of a trail braking being something where you're, you're kind of using the rear brake a little into the corner to help keep things, you know, controlled or whatever, you know, maybe help you hold the line a little bit when you feel like you're starting to lose the line. And uh, he says use the rear brake for that trail braking. But when I've read other reports, they talk about trail braking as something where you're just kind of using the fronts deep into the corner. You know, and uh, you know, you're just, I guess you're not getting the gas because you can't really do both very effectively. So, see that sounds wrong, it just sounds wrong. 
So I think his definition is the one I'm going to use. Or if you want to call it something else, whatever it is, that is a technique I have used successfully to save myself a couple times. When I think I was losing my line and uh, I just used the rear brake kind of mid-corner. Help me get the rear end to settle down or start kind of doing what I wanted it to do. Anyways, I kind of like this segment right here. Going through the fines, furs, whatever you want to call them. I don't worry about pine cones on the road. <laughs> That's a new one. Okay, Canyon. Second time through here. First time was on the Safe Bog ride. Just saw a couple Ducatis go through. It's uh, not the only one out here for some fun. This canyon is a lot more curvy, blind corners. It should be a good place to uh, test some of what I've been trying to do on Angel's Crest today. But I gotta be careful. I'm sure there's cross traffic and I don't want to get in trouble. Alright, kind of late apex. Good job. Alright, don't know this corner very well. It's a bit longer than I thought. Not bad. <laughs> this guy knows the road. Kind of gets his knee out there. See? Right on your own face, Dan. One of the most important lessons that book had. Probably couldn't have been stressed enough. Right on your own face. I can't do that guy's face. Especially on a road I don't know very well. Getting a chance to get outside. See? See? It horned me. And it bit me. Alright. Get back on track. Oh, I thought the Mustang would be going alright. Guess not. Them following the Ducatis, so oh, that's why. <laughs> that was definitely a case of looking for your leaf. Except for the fact it's kind of residential. I can see why people like this road. To inside. Time to wait to fix that one. So before it started. 